Okay, so I want to ask you about your competition, obviously, and you don't have to mention names. We know who we're talking about. Enphase, Tesla, Solar Edge. <laughs> I'll mention them. And uh, so you have a different sort of chemistry, but the other guys, lithium, iron, phosphate, to be clear, the other guys are starting to do that. They're not actually uh, sticking with the lithium as we've discussed previously. They're actually all starting to switch over to lithium, iron, phosphate. Even Tesla is. So explain how that's going to work because now you're competing for also product, I would assume, from... Well, that's there's the still lithium involved. Lithium is a metal. There's still lithium involved. Uh, but they're switching over because there's a there's a fire risk with lithium ion. And mainly it's the cobalt and manganese. And we've talked yeah. about that before. So lithium iron phosphate, LFP, does not use cobalt and manganese. And there is no fire hazard. There is no thermal runaway. There is no... Uh, flammable off-gassing. Uh, there was a big fire up in San Jose just this last week. Somebody's lithium ion batteries caught on fire and caused a real big mess. Um, that, was so, at the, that was the mega, just to be clear, that was the, the mega pack. It was one, one mega pack. That, that, correct. Right, that so, actually... so look, we were ahead of the game. We, we chose lithium iron phosphate, you know, a couple reasons. One, doesn't catch on fire and I want to sleep well at night. You know, I'm in the business of taking care of residential customers and I don't, I don't need to hear somebody's house burn down. Um, that was one reason. Yeah, they weigh twice as much, but we're moving them once every 20 years or something, right? So the weight doesn't bother me. They cost twice as much. And that cost may or may not be coming down in the future, but I was willing to absorb those costs. It is interesting to see the rest of the industry, at least in the energy storage uh, sector, is starting to transition to the lithium iron phosphate. That's fine. There's other chemistries out there that I'm keeping a very close eye on as well. We'll be agnostic to those in the future, but uh, lithium iron phosphate is extremely safe. And, uh, and the great news about our batteries is they're also 6,000 cycles. And some of our competitors will say, well, you know, Brent, what's the big deal? We've got an 8,000 cycle battery. Who cares about your 6,000? But they define a cycle as a charge, that's a cycle, and a discharge is a cycle. So in every day, it's two cycles. Well, you know, then that's really a 4,000 cycle battery the way we define it, okay? Our 6,000 cycle batteries literally the way they're set up to everybody are going to last more than 16 years. Okay. okay. You're basically a 12,000 uh, cycle battery. That's if they're depending, depending on how you do. That's correct. And a right, lot of, right. a lot of people, they don't go into the details like on their spec sheets and things on how actually they define a cycle. But when you look at government official government finding of uh, filings, you actually find out what their definitions are. And we have a true 6,000 cycle battery, meaning 6,000 divided by 365 days, that's 16 and a half years that that battery is going to last. Charge it, now, right, if you charge it every day from zero to 100. It, it, that's if you fully discharge and mm. fully recharge every day. If you if you charge and discharge on average less than that, it lasts even longer. Right. right. So well, the new battery the, technically can last 20 years. 20 plus one years. One my house will. <laughs> well, that's 20 years if you are discharging it and charging it every day. Like if you're Almost, not right. hitting that, then, it, you know, it, well, it could it be depends. substantially longer than that. Technically, it depends. it's not it's not because you are charging and discharging every day. It's how deeply it's called depth of discharge. It's how deeply you're <clears> discharging. <throat> right. And the way it's set up to come from us, it's going to last at least 16 years. Um, but like my house, I only use about 50 percent of the battery on a nightly basis. Okay, well, based on that, on the charts, that battery is going to let my the batteries on my house are going to last at least 21 years. Well, in 21 years, the technology is going to change a whole bunch. Right. There's another advantage in Neovolta. A lot of our competitors fully integrate the battery cells uh, and or wafers in with the inverter components and all that stuff. You can't just go in there and change that stuff. It's not easy to work on if there's a if there's a warranty issue. Neovolta, we don't do it. It's all compartmentalized. And if we need to swap out technology in 20 years, uh, it's pretty easy to do. It takes five minutes to change a battery. Yeah, so you're the basically storage, saying the storage well, component can be, can be removed. The storage Correct. component is separate from the controller. Correct. Right. So, so all the hookups to the actual unit, that's done. You don't need to touch that. You just open up the unit, pull out the old battery, put in whatever new technology battery, as long as the connections are the same. And you just move disconnect the positive, the negative, and the communication. Right. It should be that battery. simple. I, I know. Really, I, I know. It should, it should be. be it simple. really should be that simple. Uh, well, I know. Like <clears throat> changing the car battery. <clears throat> yeah. It's really that easy. How do you how do you convince though? Like, so obviously, if you're talking to a lot of non-technical people, still homeowners, I, at this point, the battery business is becoming so uh, entrenched with so many players. Like we said, Enphase, Solar Edge, Tesla, plus more. 
how do you go to a homeowner and convince them that, hey, this is a better technology that'll last you longer because it's also easier to maintain and change? Like, how is that conversation working out? Well, it, it's not just that, it's even better. I mean, so the disadvantage of Neovolt is we're, we're new and we're small and we don't have the big billion dollar company name, right? So the way we're beating them is we have the cheapest price point in the industry. And that's not us saying that. There've been several articles that have come out and done direct cost comparisons. We are the cheapest in the industry, price per kilowatt or uh, price price per per uh, inverter size, kilowatts, uh, you know, inverting power and price per kilowatt uh, hours on the batteries. We are the cheapest in the industry. So that's one. We can do AC solar, which is predominant. Mm. We can do DC solar. Most of our competitors can't do that. We can add generators. They can't do that. Uh, hey, we can take 208 three-phase power. I mean, we've got so many options and things. Now we have CTs we can add. Here's another improvement that I rolled out just uh, about six months ago. We include some uh, current transmitters uh, with the systems. You do a settings change. You land those on the main service panel. And so now the battery is running the critical loads all the time. But during time of use or high energy cost hours, the battery then also will feed power back to the main service panel of those remaining circuits. So now your air conditioner can be running on the system as well. We keep making all kinds of design improvements and efficiencies and roll to the customer and go, well, you get batteries that won't catch on fire. That's a big one with people. It can be installed inside or outside. A lot of our competitors are only inside the garage, which is getting all kinds of more regulatory um, requirements because of the fire risk in some of these chemistries. So we're outside as well. The 208 three phase, 120, 240, all these things. I mean, we've got so many different options and capabilities that most of our competitors might do two or three of those things, but they don't do all the things that we're doing. So we give uh, customers a whole lot more options. And so, and at the cheapest price in the industry. So that's what wins them over every time. Can you also speak to the fact that the, that the tax credit has been opened up for battery alone installs yeah, for existing solar customers? So the Inflation Reduction Act that just came out. So prior to that, if you wanted the prior to that, we were down to a 26 percent federal uh, tax rebate. Right. And there were and different states have a state rebate. Some some states do. But the 26 percent federal rebate only applied to energy storage systems if it was combined with solar. Mm -hmm. Right. So it had to be a new solar install. Yeah. Well, that left out all the legacy markets. Somebody who's had solar for 15 years and their inverter is bad. They need an inverter upgrade and all this stuff. They were left out of these federal rebates. With the Inflation Reduction Act that was recently signed, energy storage systems qual qualify solar and energy storage, but independently now for 30% rebate all on their own. Is that so now that's, 2023? Is that happening now? It's happening. It was re retroactive to 1 January of 2022. So it's effective now. That's amazing. So uh, your business has increased since that uh, act went through? Did you actually see a noticeable increase? It, it has. And, you know, we started out primarily here in California and California's, um, you know, th there's some net metering things that are being uh, debated uh, yeah. you know, on, on the policy side that have had kind of an impact. And of course, you know, we've got some recessionary trends going and those kind of things, but we still um, we're getting ready to close the biggest quarter we've ever had in about a week. <laughs> That's nice well, to hear. Um, so you will be when, it, when are you doing your your official your earnings when we when will be when will your earnings call be is this, the, will this be your first earnings call uh like public public earnings call we're we're still setting that up but we'll put out the uh public announcements in a couple of weeks is this the first one though that one uh, wraps up our annual that closed uh 30 june right right so the next one's not due for 45 days uh starting one october it's not due till the end of uh, mid-november last we talked you had a factory you had one and we kept talking about expansion so what, where are you in now? Are you expanding actually? Do you need more space or you still have enough to, to meet demand currently? And do you have more employees? Do you have more engineers now? What is the state than last time we talked? Yeah, I've, I've contracted as we've grown. I've contracted as I need support. If it's, uh, it's full-time support, I, we recently hired uh, an operations officer. Um, but most of the stuff I need is kind of temporary with regular assistance with regulatory changes that come up, those kind of things. So I contract for that work. I'm trying to still stay really light and nimble. We are, now that we've got uh, money from the uplift, uh, the NASDAQ raise, we are going to be, you know, accelerating on the marketing side. That's going to drive some more demand. Our current facility, we don't need to do anything for another couple of years. If the growth is on pace with my expectations, in probably three years, we'll either need an additional facility or a bigger facility.